Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter, and welcome back to 7 Billion Humans. So, last time we were at level 39. Uh, still have just a few more of these before we get into the orange level, the phase 3, where I guess there's going to be some talking and listening going on. So let's go ahead and learn about some printing etiquette. Yes, we need to have a conversation. Someone in this room, we won't say who, has been abusing their printing privileges. They're printing personal holiday cards, photos of themselves standing in front of the bathroom mirror, excerpts from some sort of fan fiction novella. They are clearly lonely. Yes, we need to learn to limit our printer usage and not print like we're trapped in some sort of infinite loop as data can be copied infant as if data can be copied infinitely yes please through work through our printing mindfulness assignment i'll just leave the pamphlet instructions over there all right so we need to increase our awareness of our printing each worker must print exactly five data cubes and place them anywhere on the floor and really think about the impact of each one cool so what we need to do is we need to get stuff from this printer and i'm not going to pick up the printer i'm going to find out where is my nearest printer and i'm going to take from that nearest printer. I also need to keep track of how many copies I've made. I'm going to start with zero copies. So when I take from the printer, I'm going to add one, and I'm going to call this mem2. I'm going to add one to mem2, so mem2 plus one. So I'm going to take from the printer, I'm going to say, hey, I've got another copy, and then I need to put it somewhere anywhere so I'm going to need to step somewhere and again I really don't care where I step and I'm going to say if where I'm standing is not a uh, data cube then I want to drop and then I want to continue on with my happy life I want to take the next thing from the printer um, otherwise, if I reach this point down here, then I clearly don't have a space to put it, and I need to go ahead and drop it in there. So, um, so what's going to happen? Everyone's going to run to the printer, pick up something. It's going to add one to the number, and I think I actually want to have them do calculations later. I don't want them to do the calculations right in front of the printer. That's going to take forever. So I'm going to have them do their calculations and then take from the printer. Okay. So everyone's going to do their calculations wherever they happen to drop. And think about it that way. And then I'm going to have to put another if statement in there where if they've reached 5, then they're going to have to stop. So if mem2 is equal to 5, then we want to go ahead and end. Alright, so let's try that. Huh, what's wrong with this? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We're kind of off by one, that's interesting. Um, let's go ahead and look at her. Yeah, they should have. Let's go ahead and take steps. So she's found the printer. She's starting at zero. She's added one. She's got something. She's going to step in a random location. She's going to drop it there. She's going to add one. Memory is two. She's going to find a random location and drop it there. She's going to add one. Memory is three. Okay, now this is where things are starting to get a little trippy. She found the place. Now she's at four. So she can still get something. She found a place to put it. She's going to drop it. She's at five. And she stops. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Oh, I'm off by one. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that six just to compensate for the off by one. Yay! Okay, that's definitely not nine or fewer commands. I can probably uh, bring that down. But I do have a good average here, so we're doing good on that. Alright, let's continue on. Level 40, printing etiquette. 
two. You're 41. Here we are again. Yes, it appears our polite printing pamphlet was out of date in the previous assignment, and we wasted 25 data cubes. Please enjoy your updated assignment. All right, so again, we're going to print exactly five data cubes, but this time you're going to have to label your data cubes one through five and place them anywhere on the floor. So I'm actually going to go back. I'm going to copy what we did on number 39. And we're going to go ahead and paste it into 40. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and paste it. Now, the only difference here is that before I drop, I want to make sure that I write whatever my memory location is. In this case, it's mem2. So that really should be the only difference. So everything I pick up is just going to be whatever number I've got. So there's all my ones, my twos, my threes, my fours, and fives. Cool. And so my average is still good enough, even though I had that horrendous start. Uh, just using just too many commands, but we'll get to those later. Image decryptor, number 41. Happy birthday to me! How nice, I was sent a birthday image from my bank, but it's a secure image, and they encrypted it, and now I have to figure out how to view it. Yes, I'll just log in here to my secure bank, online bank portal, and verify my security questions, and type in the security code they sent to my mobile device, and type in my previous four addresses, and accept the updated terms and conditions, and agree to paperless communication, and navigate the tutorial on how they slightly redesigned one of the buttons on the website, and decline a credit card offer, and decline another one. Okay, here we go! Here's how to view your birthday image. An image of a lady with a big hairdo says, It's so easy! They say we have to move each cube to the left, the number of tiles listed on each cube. Once that's complete, my personal birthday greeting will appear. Oh boy, I can't wait. Alright, so, uh, move each data cube to the left, the number of tiles listed on the cube. So if a cube says three, it must be moved to the left three tiles. Since this important birthday image is private, all the workers must then exit the room by stepping through one of the conveniently placed infinite pit holes. Enjoy! Cool, so we obviously need to pick up the cube. We're going to need to figure out how far to go. So I'm going to actually set mem1 to my item. And if mem1 is greater than zero, then I want to take a step to the left. So I'm basically counting the number of steps that I take to the left and then I'm also taking one off, so it's going to be a minus one. And then once I hit that spot, I should be able to drop and then head for the nearest exit. So I'm going to go ahead and say the nearest hole. I'm going to call that mem1. And then I want to step to mem1. All right, so let's try that. Let's see what happens here. Everyone picks up. Everyone marches. They're calculating. Um, and no, that's not. That's definitely not the picture. Um, they step, they move, and then we should jump. And check again. Alright, so they step, they calculate, they step. Some people, have, the ones have already put their stuff down. The threes are on the third step, they put their stuff down. The fives, the four already did hers. The sixes, sevens. Doesn't appear there's any eights, but I've got a couple of nines. There's a ten right here. We've got elevens. And then twelve. Well, yeah, you told me everyone had to exit by stepping one of the conveniently placed infinite pie holes. And I've got a picture here, and it looks like a pretty nice stick figure. So what do we do wrong? Here's one. It needs to move here. So let's see. I'm going to take a look at you. Your memory is one. Your memory is not. Your memory is greater than zero, so we're going to take a step to the great right. We're going to subtract. That's one step over. Actually, no, it started there. We need to be over here. So I actually need this to be... Hmm. 
The thing is, just being greater than zero is not enough. If I'm equal to zero... Hmm. Interesting. I want to pick this up and then set the value to my item. And if my value is greater than zero, then I need to keep walking. Actually, let's try it this way. Let's try setting our value to zero. And as long as our value is less than or equal to the item, then we're going to step left and we're actually going to add one. Let's try doing it that way. So I can't get a number that's less than zero, but I can definitely get a number that's over the size of this cube. And that's really what I want. I want something that's bigger than this. All right, so let's try this now. This cube should move one to the left. So it should move here. So they drop. And then they drop. It looks like that's working right. Everyone's moving to their positions. Well, isn't that nice? It looks just like me. Happy birthday to me. Cool. So I'm just one step over, but I've also got this huge gap. So if I'm one step over, that means there's got to be some step in here that I can actually get rid of. We'll take a look at that later. All right, I've got a fork in the road. I've got 42 and 43 before we hit 44. Let's take a look at 42. So this is important email organization. Welcome to my email box. Yes, each one of those cubes on the floor represents one of my important emails. Your other boss said she would help me organize them. She very nicely made 10 folders for me down there at the bottom. She labeled them 0 through 9. And she said we need to sort my emails into these 10 folders. For example, emails with the number 20 to 29 go into the 2 folder. Emails with the number from 70 to 79 go into the 7 folder. Emails with the number 0 through 9 go into the 0 folder. Got it? I don't really understand email, but I'm lucky to have such a good friend. Okay, thanks for your help, guys. And then basically he leaves. Cool. Um, data cubes must be put in the appropriate shredder. Do not pick up the labels 0 through 9 directly above the shredder or they will explode. Interesting. Okay, so I want to find the nearest cube, and then I want to, I'm not sure I want to just pick it up, I probably want to step to it, and then if that is not a shredder, then I want to work my way down to this row of shredders, so I'm going to uh, step down and then jump. So once we get that done, we're going to check to see if we've got a shredder. We're going to move our ways down to the shredders and then we need to figure out where we need to go. So I'm going to calculate and I don't want this to be part of an else. I actually want this to be here. I want to calculate whatever my item is divided by 10. So if I divide anything between 10 and 19 by 10, I'm going to get a 1. Anything divided by 10 between 20 and 29 will give me a 2. Dividing a unit's digit by 10 will give me a 0. So this will tell me which shredder I need to go to. And then I'm going to need to start at the beginning and work my way through. So I actually need to step to the left. So basically, if the left is not a wall, and actually not, I'm going to be here, so I actually want that. So I actually want the diagonal down here. If that's not a wall, then step left, and we're going to continue that. Now I should be at my letter. So now I can say if mem2 equals where I'm standing that I want to give it to the shredder. Else I want to take a step to the right and jump. Jump. Alright, so let's see what this does. Everyone should Find their nearest cube, pick up a cube. Let's pick up a cube, memory one. So 
So everyone's gonna find a cube, pick up a cube. They're gonna march their way down to the shredders. Once they get to their position, they're gonna do math, figure out which hole they need to put it in. They're gonna march to the left and then work their way to the spot they need to put it into. Okay, so this guy just put it in. He's getting ready to jump. Okay, so once he gives it... Yeah, yeah, I know it's not what you're looking for. Once he gives it, then we're ready to move to the next cube. Alright, so let's watch everyone do this. Okay, everyone's going to calculate. Everyone's going to move to their position. Then they're going to put stuff in the hole. Wait, what? What, what happened to my one? Oh, the nearest cube. That's the nearest cube, so I need to get out of the way. So once this happens, I don't want to jump back up to the beginning. I want to jump to a place where I'm getting out of the way. How about down here where we're going to say we're going to step up and just step all the way up to the wall. So we're always taking stuff off the top, working our way down. So if up is not a wall, then keep on going. And then once we hit this part, we're going to get our nearest cube. Okay. So what should happen is everyone picks up a cube, they go down to the shredders. They're going to calculate. They're going to find their spot. And then once they deposit, they're going to walk all the way back up till they hit this top. And then they're going to find the next cube. So he calculates. He knows he's going to go to the beginning and then work his way over to seven. And of course, when they're going in opposite directions, they'll pass each other. And he's going to run back up to the top. All right, let's see what this does. So everyone's going up and getting a cube. close to the end. Let's make sure everything's working okay. Now the thing I have to watch out for is when they move up, am I ever going to have a situation where this cube is going to be closer than a cube over here if there's like nothing over here? Like I can see I'm going to get some pretty big holes here. So he picked up the 98. She picked up the 60. Okay, so he's going to find his spot. Everyone's kind of moving to their spite, their space. Got 12, picked up, okay, he's gonna go all the way up to the top and he should find something close. Now, this is where I'm gonna run into some problems here. concerned about getting it done in a certain number of steps. I'm just concerned with getting it done. So he's going to move up and 57 should be closer to him. She's going to move up and 2 is going to be closer. She's going to be moving up and 2 is going to be closer. And she went to go pick up a 2. So what I need to do is I need to do something like if... So when we step to the place, if down is a shredder... Then we actually want to do the whole moving up thing. So we're going to pump back here. All right. So we'll do this quickly. So I think we're okay until we get to this last row of cubes because they're insisting on picking up if the person's already taken the cube they were headed towards. So 
So when I get my first hole in the bottom layer, that's where I'm going to run into problems. So that's where I want to slow it down. Okay, so she's going to get the 79. He's going to move up and he's going to get that 67. He should get the 78. She should get the 25. She should end up getting that 93. She's going to go up and she should get that 80. She should get the 69. He, I think, will get the 65. He should get the 97. And so who's going to get the 26 then? Because she's going to come down and try and get that 9, because that 9 is closer to her than the 26 is. Hopefully, I've caught that. I see that she's she's looking towards it. She's stepping towards her nearest cube. She sees it's a shredder, so she's going to try and come back up. So it looks like they're going down and not picking up shredder cubes. But this is going to be a problem, because they're never actually going to go over and see this 26. So over here... Actually, no, I do want to keep going up, but I want to go up kind of randomly up, so there's a chance that I'll move a little to the left or a little to the right. So let's try that. I know that I'm not picking up bad cubes. Okay. And again, I need to watch what happens when I get down to the final row being taken. I think if I had 10 workers, I wouldn't have this problem. Okay, so here now they're starting to take that cube, so he just took that. She's going to take the 44. Yeah, I think this meandering thing is working a little bit better. So she could take any of these cubes, and she's actually meandering over. It gives her a better chance. I like that. So she would either get the 69 or get something else. So she's going to get the 69. What's he going to do? Seriously? He's getting the cube even though... He's getting the cube even though I said don't pick it up if it's that. Seriously? Oh my goodness. I specifically said, you know, step to that place and if it's not a cube, then start doing the whole jumping up. And we were almost done. We just had one more, one more number to see. Oh my goodness. So if down, if down is a shredder, then jump, jump, jumps to here, and he should have been stepping up. I have no idea why he was picking up. He never should have gotten here. Seriously, that must be a that must be a fluke. Seriously. All right, so let's do this again and see what's going to happen. Hopefully, I'll be able to catch people before they explode. making sure things are happening. What is she doing? She was trying to get the 82. So she ended up getting the 96. And she was trying to get the 96. Down is not a shredder. Down is not a shredder, so she's going to try and pick it up. So I probably should say if down is not a shredder, then pick it up, else jump. Let's see what that does.
It breaks my heart that I have to add these extra steps because these people can't realize that you're not supposed to chase after something. And again that happens. The thing is, you're not supposed to pick up. If down is a shredder, you're not supposed to pick up. Why are you picking up? That's the only pickup I have in this entire program. You should never have entered this statement. Oh, goodness. So I need to do something like, if this is not a number cube, then jump. So basically, go to that spot, and if that spot's not a number cube, then try and find another number cube. And then if down is a shredder, down is not a shredder, then pick it up, otherwise so now I can make this, if down is a shredder, then jump and just make this a, a pickup. Alright, let's try this one more time. Goodness. I have to put that security catch in there. I have to say, okay, make sure it's actually a cube before you try and pick it up. Don't, don't pick up something else. Stop, stop, stop. Alright, so what should happen now... She's moving towards what? She sees the 80. Okay. She is moving up. Working her way up. She sees the 33. He's working his way up. And he sees the zero. But you know what? You can't pick up the zero. What does he see? He's moving up. She's moving down and getting the two. He's moving up. What's he gonna see? He sees the five. And the five is a bad data point. So he's gonna start working his way up. She put the 80 away. Now they keep diving down, but they can't pick it up. They're actually checking this time. Yay. Goodness. So I'm using quite a few more steps because I had to put all these extra checks in there. My goodness. And, of course, the time took forever. Okay. All right, so let's go to uh, 43 multiplication table. Oh no! All my email and data on my personal computer got wiped. How does this keep happening to me? Uh, because we just shredded all your email. Well, now I need to recreate this multiplication table so I can look stuff up. Like a sandwich contains two calories, and if I eat 400 calories, how come I still want to eat more sandwiches? That's multiplication. Is that grid over there? Each cube should be the product of the row and column headers. So, I'll leave it to you to rewrite those cubes. Pew. I haven't done this much math since the third grade. All right. So, please avoid picking up the row and column headers. They explode. Great. Because these guys are idiots. Alright. So, I'm going to have everyone step up. And then, if it's not a wall, then keep stepping. Up. Don't go down. Down is a bad thing. And once they do that, everyone's going to be up in this top row. Everyone's going to have track of this. So I can go ahead and set their memory equal to whatever's on the ground. And then everyone's going to step down twice. That's how you get to the, that first row.
and then you're going to have to pick up a number. You're going to write that memory location on it, drop it, and then, then we're going to take a step forward. So let's see what this does. Wait, what happened? Oh, I forgot, I forgot the jump. I want to do a jump here and we'll go ahead and get rid of that. So everyone moves up, 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 moves up. They pick, they see their number, now they're going down. She makes that a two. She makes that a two. She makes that a two. Okay, so I need to change what they're writing each time. So I'm gonna keep track. Mem one is set whatever that spot is, and I'm gonna do mem two is going to be a zero. Actually, I'm going to have Mem2 be whatever that is as well. And then after they write, then I'm going to want to add... Mem1 is going to be whatever Mem1 is plus Mem2 is. Mem2 is not going to change. Mem1 is going to be a running total. So like here... 5 is going to be here, and this is going to be 5 plus 5. This is going to be 5 plus 5 plus 5, because multiplication is just repeated addition. So let's try that. Excellent. Wonderful. 11 commands. Oh, so close. But I did faster than average. Awesome. All right, and so this is going to leave 44, our unique fashion party, before we get on to our next iteration. Unique Fashion Party, Year 44, Gansuks. It's party time! Everyone, please pick up your fashionable data cube. You will each find one directly below you and come over here to the fancy party room. Yay! Feel free to hang out. Talk about your pets or your favorite colors or your satisfaction with this job or whatever. Oh, what's that? Some showed up with the same fashionable data cube as you? Yes, well, there can only be one. Highlander style! So anyone with a sloppy, redundant value must jump with their cube into one of the convenient holes in the floor. Yes, we can all have friends. Don't worry. I haven't had a friend since the 90s, and look at me now. Excellent. So everyone needs to get into the party room. The way we get into the party room is we step down, and then if down is not a wall, then we're going to keep stepping down. That way everyone will march down. And then we're going to march to the right, so we're going to step to the right, and if the right is not equal to a wall, then keep stepping to the right. And so this is going to funnel people into our room. So make sure that works. Everyone goes... Yeah, they, they should all pick up their data cubes as well. But everyone's moving to the room. And then... Everyone's just randomly moving out of the way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that works. Uh, let's make sure that we pick up our companion cube. Now, everyone, I want to make sure that they're, if they repeat a value, then they have to dive in the hole. So how about if they, instead of going all the way to the wall, I have them kind of just stop here and move up. And then whoever's here will check themselves against this spot. Move over, check themselves against this spot. If they ever find a match, they dive. Otherwise, they go up and they move up, and if they get up to this row, then they're good. They get to stay at the party. Everyone else is going to compare themselves and keep going. So, I want to say if diagonal is not equal to a hole, then we're going to keep moving to the right. That's going to take us to here. So, everyone will get to this spot. And so, I need to check up. So, if up is not a worker then we're good. We want to step up and we're actually so good we're done. If I hit this part down here I haven't ended so I need to say if my item equals uh, whoever's directly above me 
then I need to get out. So I need to find the nearest hole and become one with it. And if I've reached this and I've reached this, then I want to step to the right. And I want to continue the whole thing again. All right, so it looks like I have a zero, a one, a two, three, four, a five, and a six. What, where are you? Oh, stop, stop. Um, if down is a hole. So they're gonna keep going till they get to here. Okay, so six, you move up, four, you move up six, you're you're gone by four, you're gonna move over and then die. One, you're gonna move and go up. Four, you're gonna die. Three, yours should be good. Five, you should be good. Two should be good. Ones are gonna die right here. This two is gonna die right here. Zero should be good. Yeah, two dies. Some of these are dying. That's okay. Zero is gonna move in the spot. So everyone here has a unique number. Everyone else should match one of those numbers and they should die when they hit that number. It looks like everyone is working well. I feel sorry for these people that are late to the party and so they don't get to stay in the party room. Everyone else is getting kicked. I love how when they when they jump into the hole, they throw their cube up as they jump. The five, the three, the one, the four. They kind of throw their cube up in the air as they jump down the hole. It's amazing. All right, so it looks like this is working really, really well. Five dies, zero dies. That were awesome. Didn't use 11 commands, I used 15 commands, and it's a little slow. I'm trying to figure out how you would do faster. I mean, there was as little movement as possible. Cool. All right, so that completes all of these blue tasks. We've got the orange tasks to work on, so that's what we're going to work on next time. Thank you for watching. Once again, this is Mr. Potter. Have a great day.